That's Gabe Mervine in Denver playing electric trumpet on my tune, Turbulent Altercation. How many CDs do you have? I've done four. And and how, people just go to gabrielmervine.com to find that too? Yep, um, they're there for digital download and you can also uh, get a physical one if, if you'd like. I definitely, I didn't print my latest record, but I'm planning on printing a few, but it's like, you know, I, I don't, the CD player is gone, you know, I don't know a lot of people with them anymore. Um, so I'm trying to make the move to digital. And if you see me on a gig or if you come hear me live sometime, just ask, I usually have them on me too. So happy to share the music. My impression is you get up, you start playing a little bit, you warm up, you play with some play alongs, you might practice some classical etude stuff. And then um, before you know it, it's late afternoon and you're kind of heading out somewhere to go sit in. I mean, to sit in with people you know and people you don't know. You're just playing all the time. Uh, yeah, this, this quarantine has, has given me some time to like really think about that. But yes, you're totally correct for the last like at least decade. I've been pretty much practicing every day. And if I don't have a gig, that night I go out and sit in. And if I do have a gig that night and it's short, I go sit in after or whatever, you know. Um, but I've taken a lot of uh, advice or followed, I've been trying to not intentionally, but just follow in the footsteps of the people that have inspired me. You know, I have these memories of like, every time I would go out on tour with the Motet to New York, We'd play this place called Brooklyn Bowl, and it, the shows would end early, and I'd always take the train in and go to Smalls. Yeah. And I'm telling you, every freaking time I went there, Roy Hargrove was there. This is a dude who's at the top of the modern trumpet game, and he's hanging at the nightly jam sessions all night, every night, um, just running tunes and running changes and not being rude being respectful, listening to other people play. If someone doesn't know the tune, he'll just, I just, I'd, I'd see him do this to a piano player who didn't know the changes. And then after he finishes his solo, he shows him the changes real quick, boom, you know? And uh, uh, not just trumpeters, but another person that comes to mind is Wynton Marsalis, how it's just like, when I look at his discography, it's like some years he released three albums, you know? And not all, and especially someone like Wynton, he's like a humanitarian as well. And, and it's like that stuff doesn't happen just randomly. This, this stuff happens from uh, the, the amount of dedication they put into their art form and you can see it, you can hear it. And uh, now that I'm in my getting up to, you know, coming up on my mid thirties here, I also feel myself wanting to be a good example for the people who are just coming onto the scene and like let them know like oh that's what it takes you know you got to put in some time every day and listen to records and also go out and sit in with people and learn tunes and and be cool man <laughs> that's worth a toast <laughs> well said I, you got to get that sound effect again clink yeah that reminds me of like i don't know is it like howard stern or any of those radio shows where they had the guy on the sound effects yes Man, the point I, I want to stress about that is, yes, just be nice, be a giver, not a taker, and yeah. do what you love. Um, what, when you're, I, I've been on gigs with you, which you're saying they end early. Everyone should know Gabe's early is a different thing than others. Mm -hmm. So a, a gig ending early is 10. And then, oh, wow, okay. And then, then Gabe's like throwing his horn in his case and dashing out. And he's like, well, I'm trying to make this thing up in... Um, outside of town for this, you know, other jam session or to sit in with another band, do another gig till one. Um, yeah. When you're on your way to go do that, what is going through your mind? I mean, there's a number of reasons. I like to look at it as just a holistic, I love music and I love being around it and I love variety. I love playing all different kinds of music. So maybe we just got done with a big band gig or a Temptations gig or a wedding gig and I want to go play some funky music or I want to go play some small group jazz um, but also from the other aspect of it and like I like I said I, I just really enjoy doing this I couldn't put this much time into it if I didn't really just enjoy it but there's also an aspect of be seen be heard be on the scene you know and I don't 
think of myself as somebody who's like narcissistic in that way and trying to just get something or whatever. So self-absorbed, mainly I want to keep being able to do this for a living. And one of the things that's enabled me to do that is um, to be proficient at my instrument in enough different categories that I'm allowed to, I can make a living playing gigs most nights. So I got to Like you brought up earlier, I got to have my classical stuff together. Cause I did some shows with Boulder Philharmonic and Colorado symphony for the first time last year, but also playing like funk music and being able to play some high note trumpet and have a decent tone for small group stuff. If I can have all that together, it's like, cool. I know I don't have to turn down a gig because I can't do something. And I know people will want to call me cause they know I can. Yeah. You know, and um, by the way, you've seen me put up a few times with tips. Um, if you can spare even a couple of bucks, um, no limit, $1 to $100 um, to help Gabe. This has been a really tough three months. Uh, someone like him who's out there doing it, playing among the people, for the people, and then something like this just shuts it down. And we've all felt yeah. it really heavy. And um, so just paying rent, paying bills. This is our income. This is the way we live. And people might yeah. think, well, you're kind of doing that fun little thing. And I, I hope a, 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 an interview like this sort of broadens people's minds a little bit and go, to play like Gabe does, I, don't, I honestly don't believe it's possible to play once a week for five years. Um, it, you just can't do it. This right. is a sophisticated language that you have to assimilate music like written notes but also the the um trumpet playing the brass instrument it's so physical you have to play it every day you have to do your calisthenics it's about strength and flexibility and um someone like gabe is at the top of his game and when you hear him on a gig and go man <laughs> how do you do that the answer is he plays every day and he's thinking yeah. about it yeah so how do you keep the yeah. motivation going? You just love it? Um, I do. Honestly, I've been thinking about that a lot during this quarantine because I one of the things I miss most is just like going to the symphony. I was really getting into going to the opera or like ballet. The composer thing has just been really astonishing me lately, the concept of, of all that. So to answer your question, I, I, I think first and foremost, I'm just a music lover. Yeah. Like I like to go out and maybe that, pertains to the last question you asked me too about why do I leave the gig and go to someone else's gig to sit in or just listen I like being around music it makes me feel comfortable you know um <laughs> but uh how do I stay motivated during this time it was um finding kind of going back to myself as a young like middle schooler and early high school when I'd like get home from school and just open up my like trumpet etude books whatever I might have and just start playing through and I play for 20 or 30 minutes and then my chops would get tired and I put it down and come back to it 30 or 40 minutes later. Um, that's mainly what I was doing, you know, between the ages of 12 to 15 or 16. By then I started playing music with people outside of school, but before then it was like you played music at home or you played in band. Yeah. And uh, so I kind of had this revelation at the beginning of the quarantine thing. Like I'm just going to go through an etude book every night. I'll just play through. It could be fun, you know, drive my neighbors insane. <laughs> but I'll just go through and play. And uh, like, that's sort of how I got into the wine thing, too. I was like, man, what would just sip on this and just play through till till I'm done, you know? And um, like I said, it becomes, especially with like Bach, I was playing a bunch of Bach stuff and it's just so musical, you know, and it's just arpeggios and like these pu perfectly written scale and arpeggiated patterns. And it has direct application to the improvisation thing, but also getting back to just like me and this. And, and that was sort of how I, to answer your question, that's sort of how I stayed motivated, at least for the first month. And also like you brought up earlier, a few weeks into it, when we realized we were gonna be in this for a while, uh, there were a couple of online recording possibilities. You know, people needed a little something for this or whatever. And, and uh, so I was recording a couple tracks here and there. Um, and that was motivation enough to just keep me going, you know? Yeah. And, and challenging. Um, 
yeah oh yeah it's, it's kind of the spice of life you're at such a good point like classical versus reggae versus funk versus uh straight ahead jazz versus big band jazz versus salsa it's all um kind of like a different so drink it's like oh yeah i feel kind of like wine today and then go man a gin and tonic would be so awesome i want the bubbles yeah. i want the the piney high-end sort of feeling from it or man yeah. i just want a beer i need a sapporo beer you know um and so you kind of can feed your soul and go man i want a little of this i want a little of that and that's kind of what sonic tonics about is going man everyone's frustrated everyone has problems but everyone also has yeah. blessings so if you if you think about that and then go but how can i get my mind right <laughs> it's listening to awesome music find what you yeah. love put on the headphones sit down under a tree for five or 10 minutes, listen to that, breathe, smile, and I guarantee you, you're gonna feel better and you're not gonna wanna get a fight with somebody. I mean, there's, there's a yeah. real peace element to music and I think we need to help spread, spread the gospel with that, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I know, I'm trying to think if I know anyone who says they don't like music, <laughs> you know? Every now and then there'll be the little, you know, sometimes I'll go in and teach elementary school or middle school, and I try and make that point, do little clinics. Who here doesn't like music? There's always one or two kids who's got to say they hate music, or whatever. But for the most part, everybody loves music. It contributes to every facet of life from, from going on a long drive to, to, to movies, to anything. There's a soundtrack to our lives. There's a soundtrack to every film. It makes it makes life, at least for me, you know, and uh, there's like, is it Sibelius that has that quote, like music begins where words fail or where words end? You know, I think about that a lot. The inexplicable parts of life are, are what we write songs about, you know? Yeah. Or, you know, who is the one that said something about, you know, get rid of all of the art and music to go off and fight war, then no, we're not going to do that. Cause what's the point of fighting the war? Um, yeah, and that's that's such a good message. I think right now is going, man, the arts now are kind of shut down. Let's support those because we have to. That's what everyone's home doing, listening to music, listening to Netflix. If you don't think music's important, play a, a movie with the sound off and yeah. tell me how emotional it gets for you. It, it yeah. won't. So um, like being aware that music is important, but you. It, to me and to all of us that are in this business, we chose to do it because it's what we love.